Virtual Man back at it again with an image for the Raspberry Pi 4. For those of you that aren't aware, he makes some very good images amongst others. And uh, this one is a new image that he came out with. A lot of people are running his 512 gigabyte image, which was you know, one of the biggest images for its time. And it just kind of had almost everything you can want. Then he added on some add-on packs where you can add a hard drive. And now he has a brand new base image, which has all the add-ons that he's added throughout you know, the year almost. And also you can now boot it off of a single hard drive. And also there's up to two terabytes worth of add-ons. So rather than downloading a two terabyte image, he has now set this up with ROM packs. And so what this is, is you can download this base 64 gigabyte image and then go ahead and add on packs. You can be selective or you can add on all of them to make a two terabyte image. So let's go ahead and check this out. So this is what it's gonna look like on first boot. And as you see, um, it's mostly ports and uh, are the games. Now it has all your collections already set up for you here, but there's just not gonna be anything in it. And uh, you'll just have to go over here to ports. And you'll see here, it's just some uh, ports like, you know, Brutal Doom, Wolfenstein, Doom 1 and 2, Duke Nukem. Uh, it does have Half-Life on here. Hexen 2, Jazz the Jack Rabbit, Quake, and a bunch of Quake uh, ROMs or uh, add on packs, and then uh, Super Mario War, Tux Cart. So, some pretty cool little, you know, uh, ported games that are a lot of fun. Some run better than others. There's a little bit of lag in some of these games. Just note that. Very cool. So, but if you notice, there's no other games in here. Go to Pixel Desktop if you want. Um, so, and Cody's installed. So if you want to add games, you have to go and add game packs. So in order to do that, I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I'm connected to the internet. You can do that via post or, you know, go ahead and put in a landline. You also want to know what your IP address is. So you can click down here and find out what your IP address. Once you know your IP address, we can go ahead and connect to your Pi remotely and go ahead and transfer those ROMs. So let's go ahead and move over to my computer and transfer those ROMs. All right, so on the left side here, we have our Raspberry Pi. We're just gonna go over here to ROMs. And you can see we have all these folders, but you know, like Atari 2600, there's no games. So we wanna go ahead and add games to this. So I have the console add-on pack. You see you have, it'll give you Atari, SNES, a lot of these really smaller uh, systems, you're not going to get your Dreamcast and your PSP. It looks like you're going to get up to Nintendo 64. So this is a good starting point for those that want to build their own image. The other cool thing about this is if you don't want to transfer a game or save some space, you can and go ahead and update those lists and things uh, later. But and there we go. So for the portables here, you should start with this. Just like the other one, I did forgot to tell you. You know, you do have to seven zip and extract them. There is a password on these files. So, um, but he gives you the password. Just join his forum, and you can get the password there. Um, and then here's those handhelds. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer these over as well once this one is completed. So we'll have both uh, portables and consoles as well. So you can see here on his forum, go ahead and check out his images. And here they are. These are the two newest ones version, the ones that say 1.98. So there's a base image. There's also this arcade image as well. And again, with the arcade image, you might want to add on some packs as well. But if you just want like a basic arcade only type of build, there is that one kind of pre-made. Now, don't forget, he still has his 512 uh, gigabyte out there that a lot of people like because it just gives you everything all in one and he still has his old Pi 3 uh, release as well for those of you still rocking a Pi 3 um, so this approach is very different it wasn't like you know go and download everything you can now pick and choose some people might like that so um, over here are the bundles you're probably not gonna want the PlayStation 2 yet he is working on a computer version of his image, and then this PlayStation 2 pack will actually be very helpful. Um, but here are all your packs, and as you see here in this video, I was just showing you the um, console pack and the handheld pack, and because uh, that's really, I think, what most people are going to be used to want, want. If you want like computer games like Commodore 64 and like Amiga and stuff. So, but like I was saying, you want to add these packs onto this base image, like the Dreamcast pack, the PlayStation 1 pack, Naomi pack. 
um, SNES CD, 3DO, Neo Geo CD, Open Bore, uh, add the arcade games to it, you'd want the arcade bundle. And so you could pick and choose what you want. You just download them, extract them, and transfer them over the network like I'm showing you. So we're done transferring ROMs, do a quick restart. All right, here we go. Man, this theme is really hard to see around, but I just added all those Nintendo 64. You get the games and the video snaps, and you just click in, and it should play. Before we do that, I want to give you a quick little tour of this image, and again, a lot of this stuff the 512 gigabyte image has, it's just the 512 gigabyte image is now out of date, but it's going to run just fine. And honestly, the, the fixes that have been implemented since then are very small and are not necessarily going to affect everyone. You're not like at any kind of risk of security or hacking or your system blowing up or anything like that. It's simply, you know, uh, some game fixes, some emulator setting fixes, uh, some newer cores for those emulators. So maybe some performance but not much. That being said, I just wanted to showcase some things that you know, you hit select on your controller and he has this thing preloaded with a ton of different screen savers that you can um, scroll between and play with. Um, pretty cool, right? They also have a ton of Hursty themes pre-installed. You can go over here to UI settings, change your theme. And right now it's on a theme randomizer so it'll randomly you know, pick um, you know, a different theme every time you boot up your your Raspberry Pi, although you can turn that off by going into the RetroPie options and turning off the theme randomizer. Um, so you see we just changed it again. And here are some of the systems we've added now. I also added portables as well. So let's go ahead and play a couple games while I'm, uh, you know, talking a little bit more about this image and the concept. So uh, like I said earlier, I believe that the reason for, you know, these changes is um now we're in it's the downloads are huge and you know downloading a 512 gigabyte file is one thing downloading a one terabyte file is another thing remember we're now up to two terabytes worth of games now not everything is going to run perfectly on the raspberry pi so some of this is also for an upcoming um build which he might be you know, exporting this over to um, PC. So um, he's kind of, oh, I, I, I thought I had that tucked, but I didn't. This is running really good. You can see the bezels are on here and it boots up really fast. Now you can run these on a hard drive as well, run the expansion packs and uh, it runs really great. Let's try, let's just pick a random letter here, J. Killer Instinct doesn't run amazing. Mario Party is more of a multiplayer. Let's go ahead and hit up Micro Machines. So you can absolutely just download this on a hard drive, but one of the things that's nice about the packs is you can download like which pack you want and you don't have to download everything you don't want. Now I'm just gonna be honest with you all about what I think about all of it. it what I think is, you know, to be honest with you, I still love my 512. I have it on a card and I just run that. And I don't see myself necessarily building, you know, a complete version of this. I commend the man's effort with this and i think there will be a lot of people interested into it interested in it but um where i see you know if i were you and you haven't tried out this 512 gigabyte image he's no longer going to be supporting it so i would go ahead and grab that while you can because i think that will go down you know in the history books as a really great image for the raspberry pi um four now, um, I, Arcade Punks will probably still have it. I'm not sure which version they have though. So for those of you that don't know, there's a couple different versions of that particular, um, of that build. There's like a re-release. So um, I would just get the most recent version of that myself. The reason I say that is there is a lot of games that I don't necessarily want, A, and B, I don't need a two terabyte image now, now, however, I would say that we're kind of future proofing here and you know I like that the way that he thinks about that which is once he makes a base image for the um, look at that first place once he makes a base image for the computer and you can just have all your ROMs on one hard drive and then switch between devices I think that'll be somewhat of a game changer you can already do that with certain devices but it's hard to go from like a Raspberry Pi to a um, to a uh, 
like a PC or a Mac or something. So I can see that, um, you know, catching on. So when that when that's all said and done, you know, loading up a two terabyte hard drive, having them all. Not only that, but it's nice to have the ROMs too in case you do other builds and stuff like that. You can, you know, borrow them. True Lies, great game right here. Um, and so, yeah, long story short <laughs> is uh, I'm totally happy with the 512, although I could see where this is all going. And um, it's actually really not hard at all. For those of you like, why would I go through all that work? Like that's something I like is it's all pre-done for me. And so it's not gonna be for everyone. I just want to commend his work though for, you know, kind of thinking outside the box. A lot of people have tried this before. You have people like the uh, Pi Wizard. You had, um, you know, when Motion Blue came out, that was kind of the whole idea between it was PAX. And there's been other emulators and other operating systems that, um, you know, have tried to go that route. Nice. This is where you just, <laughs> you just go for it. Oh, <laughs> whoa. Go, here you go. Jump. Straight down the middle. Now there's a helicopter. <laughs> this is a big hill. Oh. <laughs> The house is on top of a big hill. Got him. There you go. If you guys want to skip a level. All right. So closing remarks. Really good stuff. Um, build it yourself. Let me know if you want me to review the 128 gigabyte arcade. This is the 64 gigabyte, which is actually only about 30 gigabytes when I uh, downloaded it. Um, but you know you need a little bit of extra space there. So I put it on a 128 gigabyte card, and then I transferred the ROMs over to the card. You can put it on a 512 card and then download your ROMs that way. Or you could put it on a 64 gigabyte card and then run the rest on the hard drive. Or you could just burn the whole thing to a hard drive and run it all off of a hard drive. You have a few different options there. So uh, in conclusion, I, like I said, it's kind of a cool thing. Am I gonna necessarily be switching over anytime soon? Not really, uh, but I'm gonna use it. I'm still gonna use the 512, I love that. And maybe with some add-on packs if I wanna pay, play particular games. And then I like the add-on add packs in general. It's nice to have good packs of ROMs that work really well. So that's what I think. Let me know what y'all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.